Mrs. Magdad got me this Dremel for Christmas over 20 years ago, and I use it on almost every project. I'm not sure it matters which brand rotary tool you buy. The number one feature you should look for is variable speed. I almost always run my rotary tool on the lowest speed setting. I'm not a big fan of battery powered tools, but I like the slower speed of this rechargeable Dremel I found in the free pile. I actually prefer it to the corded Dremel for drum sanding and polishing plastic. The most important rotary tool accessory is one of these. The last thing you need is a tiny wire stuck in your eye or half a cutting wheel buried in your cheek. I like to use these organizers for my rotary tool accessories. You can move the dividers around to make different size compartments. I think I found this one in a craft store. And this one is from Walmart's fishing tackle department. Ah! I use my rotary tool along with Chuck's favorite sauce to polish steel, brass, and plastic. Here's the three polishing wheels I use. These hard felt wheels work well with harder polishing compounds like this black emery. For flits, I prefer these stacked cloth wheels. These puffball wheels are handy for working around contours and for polishing plastic. I run my rotary tool on the lowest speed setting when polishing. As I mentioned before, I prefer the lower speed available on my cordless Dremel for polishing plastic. Here's a variation on Scoutcrafter's trick for cleaning polishing wheels. After a few projects, I run the wheel on the saw blade to knock out the buildup polish and soften the wheel. Moving on to these wire spitters. The small wire wheel and cup brush are effective at removing rust in areas that are tough to reach with a big wire wheel. The downside is that inevitably I get sprayed with tiny wires, even running them on the lowest speed. I found this larger wire wheel at Harbor Freight. It doesn't spit wires, but it is on the verge of being too big. I like to add heat shrink tubing to these pen type brushes. It concentrates the bristles for working in tight corners and crevices. I find it works particularly well cleaning around both raised and stamped lettering. I've had success with these plastic abrasive bristle wheels. I found that they can replace the wire spinning wheels in many situations. These wheels are directional and have to be installed on the mandrel in the correct orientation. I also run these on the lowest speed setting to avoid overheating the plastic. You can buy abrasive buffing wheels like these. Each color is a different grit. I like making my own. I got this trick from 805 Road King. I cut the wheels out of sheets of Scotch-Brite type material. I sharpened an exhaust pipe adapter for cutting out the wheels. I like the inch and a half diameter the best. I use a standard cutoff wheel mandrel along with a tiny washer. I've experimented with several materials and I like the Scotch-Brite maroon and gray the best.
give these homemade wheels a try. And if you're not watching 805 Road King, you need to re-examine your life choices. The best advice I can give you about using these sanding drums is keep your speed as low as it will go. These are just chuck-sized cardboard toilet paper tubes with sand glued to the outside. They are not going to last at 30,000 RPM. The lower speed of my free pile rechargeable Dremel is a great match for the sanding drums. If you're having trouble installing the drum on the rubber mandrel, try working the end of a needle nose pliers into the drum. These diamond coated burr bits like a higher RPM. They are handy for grinding off the mushrooming on pins and rivets. The ball shaped bit is ideal for reprofiling the business end of nail sets. And I've used them for creating a stippling effect. I've used the cone shaped bit to enlarge holes in tough to drill stainless steel. These cutoff wheels also like the higher RPM settings. I use this thicker reinforced wheel for general cutting. The thin wheels are handy for cutting screwdriver flats and small screw heads. Not too fast for you to see, likes to stack the thin wheels to use as more of a grinding wheel. I've tried his trick a couple times and have had success. I got this right angle attachment so I could run these sanding discs. I've only used it on a couple projects, so I'm not ready to recommend it yet. The rotary tool is super versatile. I use mine on almost every project. If you've got a good rotary tool tip or trick, please share it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I've included Amazon links in the description below to most of the products that I talked about in this video. If you use these links to purchase a product from Amazon, it helps me and Chuck out a little.